This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, and it's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, fellow Ramsey personality, George Camel. And the phone number to jump in to talk to George and I today is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Well, let's just call the elephant out in the studio, shall we, George? What's that? If you, if you were hoping Dave was on today, Dave Ramsey, he's the legend, he's the icon, he's not. But you and I are. It's a good call And out. so George is here. He's a money expert. He's living the plan, uh, about ready to complete Baby Step 7. And George is fantastic. He'll answer your money questions today. And then I uh, am focused on helping you get a bigger shovel. How about that? That's a good one. Uh, how about enjoying lifting the shovel? So what we're talking about here is is doing work that you really enjoy, but also making really good money. How about impact and income? Metaphorical money shovel. Money and meeting. That's right. But George, I, I want to talk about something because I've, we, you know, I've got this new book coming out, as you know, November 9th, From Paycheck to Purpose. And there's a lot of people, even uh, on my Facebook page for The Ken Coleman Show, they're going, well, I, I can't buy the book this month. It's not in the budget. Wow. What say you to people who are going, Ken, I, I would love to have the dream job. I, I would love to make more money, but I, I'm, I'm gazelle intense right now. You know my seven stages. You know yeah. the baby steps. It can be done. Yes. I feel like I lived the stages before I knew them, and you were one of my mentors along the way in my career yeah. journey. So I can help these people get a raise. Oh, yeah. Get out of the baby steps faster. So we'll talk about some work questions. you got a toxic boss, maybe dealing with some, some stuff like that. You're going, hey, i got a couple options, Ken. Which way should I go? I have no clue what I want to do, Ken. I'm interested. We'll take some of those questions as well as the money questions. And by the way, George has lived it. Uh, George and I have been friends for, we were talking a about decade. this the other day, a decade. Coming up on a decade. Yeah. And by the way, the very same path. Yeah. Uh, except different lanes, money and then purpose and peak performance on my side. But we have very similar stories and we love being together. Always fun to be with you, George. You ready to do this? I'm so ready, Ken. All right, let's do it. Let's get to the phones. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Dylan joins us in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Dylan, how can we help? Hey, I had a question about renting. Um, and whether I should wait or what. Okay. Um, Give us a few more details. I'm, so I'm looking, apartments around here are all around fourteen to 1500 some a little more, some a little less. And uh, I found a place that is really nice that I, I would really like to go to for 1400 And um, well, I, I worked out a budget, and I'd be, I'd be able to, swing it with utilities and everything else is with far as car insurance and all that. But I'd only be like it'd only be make three hundred, four hundred dollars at the end of each month. So that's you're saying the wiggle room, you'd have three to four hundred dollars left? Yeah. Yeah, that's just, so how, the, what's yeah, your, that's just the wiggle room. What's your take home pay every month? Uh around thirty five to thirty six hundred. Okay. I mean this is a that's a big chunk of your income going to rent. Yeah. Are you are you single? So thing I'm, uh, single getting married. Okay. So I want to know yeah. your wife to be, is she employed and if she is, what is she going to be bringing to this household income? Um she's in school right now. She went debt free. Good. Um and she'll be she'll be coming out probably for dairy management for around probably 40000 a year. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of her income being a part of this equation because that makes this thing make a lot more sense. But right now, if I'm you, you're getting a roommate until you are hitched and she moves in. George, George, call on me. I'm raising my hand. Ken, Ken, right here. Thank you very much. Dylan, I did this. Uh, I did this exact thing. Uh, when Stacy and I got married nearly 24 years ago, I was working in Richmond, Virginia, and she was in Charlotte, North Carolina, getting ready for the wedding. I was in my first job working for the governor, and I did this same deal. I got an apartment for us for six months because I started my job in January. It was almost six months to the day 
um, uh, when we would be getting married. And so I had a buddy who was in Richmond in that political circle, and I got him to sign on for six months, and he Boom. covered half of the rent for six months, moved out uh, while we were on the honeymoon. So this can be done, George. I just, yeah. I, I thank you for calling on me, teacher. And that was, I just had a advice. light bulb moment. It was great. So, advice. Dylan, are you opposed to I getting have one a roommate? More question. Oh, I'm not opposed to it. But here is where I was thinking if, if, um, would, would you guys think it's smart? I'm going to be getting a raise in January. So about, it'd be about five grand a month is what my income would go up to. That's a big raise. Would it be smart? Would I have to jump one? Like, so to get this apartment, I'd have to jump on it soon. Do you think it'd be smart to put the kind of put the cart before the horse? and do it even though I don't have the raise yet? Or should I wait till I get the raise then be looking at something? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, you can rent that apartment right now, but you've got to get a roommate day one. Okay. And so how, how far away is this wedding? Don't count on... Uh, it's in June. In June. You know what? Okay. I mean, if you're, if you're bringing home $5,000 a month, we're talking, you're probably, you're going to be making what? 80K? 85K? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be around there. I didn't see the math, but yeah. Well, doing math is important here because what, here's what I want. I want this <laughs> parameter to, to fit into your life where your rent is no more than about a quarter of your take-home pay. So that's the math I'm doing to go, all right, $1,400 a month, you've got to make a little over five grand to fit within that parameter. So if that's the case, yes, you okay. can rent on your own because you have a lot of margin left over in your budget to continue on with the baby steps. Do you have debt right now? I do. It's about nine thousand. Nine thousand. What kind of debt is that? It's just a car loan. I took out a car loan before I started listening to you guys. Okay. Yeah. I, if I'm you, I'm cleaning up that car debt before I get married, so you guys can get off on the right foot and have all of the income stay with you. And is she taking on any debt in, in, into the marriage? No. No. Good. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, Dylan, George is right. I think you get the roommate, man, because that allows you to pay off the debt, uh, keep your expenses really, really low, and tackle that debt. I really like that. Yeah, even even with this raise coming, I still love the idea of you getting a roommate, cleaning up this debt until you guys get married, she moves in. That's what that's what I would do if I was in okay. your shoes, Dylan. All righty. Well, thank you very much. There you go. Absolutely, man. Now, I got, you know, the other side of this, there's a relational component to this financial decision, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to throw my buddy's name out there and throw him under the bus because you never know who's listening to the second you largest never know. radio show. What if show. he's listening? He might be. Uh, but you got to put some boundaries out there, George, mm. because if this is the place where your wife to be is going to join. You know what I mean? She's yeah. probably going to come over. You got to tell him, man, clean up, man. You know? I've like, been there. Nothing. Institute the, uh, if it's over a week old in the fridge, it's gone. Like, you got to put some boundaries in place because these dudes, man, they uh, they need boundaries. They it need gets pretty gross. I'm the clean roommate. I'm the roommate you want. Oh, you would be a dream. It's I too mean, late for you, Ken. That's We're too late. Yeah, you would have been great at that point because you, you you wouldn't even know George was in the house. He's so clean and tidy. Uh, and, uh, boy, he's got all kinds of phobias, though. So there's that. Yeah, that's true. You come with a lot of phobias, but you are Make clean. a fair point. Yeah, that is good stuff. All right. Hey, don't go anywhere because we're not. Your call's coming up next. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. America, you are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my Ramsey personality colleague, George Campbell. 
And we're taking your calls this hour, 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Of course, we'll take your money calls. George is loaded and ready to go for that. And then I'm going to help you with the work side of this component. Life is too short to just be living for the weekend. Amen. And I'm helping men and women every day on the Ken Coleman Show, part of the Ramsey Network, discover and do what they were created to do because money and meaning are possible. Income and impact are there for you. And uh, your Mondays should not be miserable. You have a unique contribution that the world needs, and we want to help you make that. So we'll take your work calls. You're struggling with toxic leader, uh, toxic culture, not sure what you want to do. You want to level up, make some more money. We'll take those calls as well. The phone number to jump in, 888-825-5225. Now, George, we, you know, we hang out with Dave Ramsey long enough. You and I have worked with Dave now almost a decade. I've known him for almost two decades. The guy's an icon. Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, and he's in Nashville, which means he knows a bunch of other icons and big shots. And so you get to meet some really cool people when you hang out with Dave. And I've tried to make a living just hanging out with Dave. Proximity principle Come right on. there. Yes, my, my uh, previous number one best-selling book. Thank you, George, for the plug. But one of the guys that uh, I've gotten to meet and, and, and hang a little bit with uh, from time to time uh, is a country music superstar, John Rich. Of course, if you're a country music fan, he needs Legend. no introduction. Uh, if you're not a country music fan, he's one half of uh, the big-time country music duo, Big and Rich. Um, and the guy is, honestly, as big of a deal as he is in country music, I think he's a bigger deal as an entrepreneur. Mm. I mean, the guy's brilliant, Incredible. big time business mind, and he's also a patriot. And he's got a new show, uh, not a new show, but it is a show that he launched on Fox Nation. You Fox Nation fans out there are familiar with The Pursuit with John Rich. And now it's coming prime time on Fox Business News. And uh, you can see it Wednesdays at 9 p.m. And our very own uh, Dave Ramsey is featured on tonight's show. So we thought, let's get John on the line and talk Talk some more about this. He joins us now. John Rich, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, fellas. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited about uh, the world getting to see me and Dave have a really cool conversation tonight. Yeah, I remember when you guys were filming that. I ran into you in the hallways. And uh, what I love about this show is it's just good conversation. Uh, describe the type of conversation you're having with Dave and, and other guests on the show. Well, the, the, the basis of the show is something that I was saying on big and rich concert stages all over America. And I was getting these huge responses when I would say it. And I thought, you know what? They're responding like that because it's true. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to make a whole, a whole show based on this concept. And it's very simple. America does not guarantee us happiness. It guarantees us the right to pursue happiness. And in that one sentence, guys, you can sum up, a lot of the back and forth fighting that's going on right now, some of our folks think they should have everything they want when they want it. And if they don't get it, then they, they have the right to go out and uh, pitch a fit. And most people are saying, no, I'm just glad I have, a, I have the right to pursue my dream, to go after the American dream, to exhaust my potential, the right to fail and try again and fail and try again. And maybe someday I'll, I'll succeed at it. It's, a, it's given to us in the Declaration of Independence as an inalienable right, meaning this is not a right given to us by man, given to us by government. This is a right given to us by God himself. He created us to be limitless uh, in, in his creation, and anything that limits that is running adverse to, to the a absolute foundations of this country. So the show, I sit people down like Dave Ramsey. I sit down Eddie George. I had Charlie Daniels on the show. It's all kinds of people, all different kinds of backgrounds, but the one thing they have in common is they have pursued happiness in America, and they have gone through a lot to get to where they are today. And, and what I hope the, the viewers get out of this is, yeah, I hope they're entertained, but I also hope that they get fired up and they get inspired and that they go, wow, I'm taking something on in my life right now that's difficult. Everybody's got a bigger dream than what it is they're currently doing. And they, they learn from these examples as to how to deal with failure, how to deal with disappointment, how to keep your chin up. And remember, only America, we're the only country in the history of the planet that gives its people the right to pursue happiness. It's our responsibility to take full advantage of it. 
He is country music superstar John Rich. He's also the host of the show The Pursuit with John Rich, which airs Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the new Fox Business News Prime lineup. Uh, John, I, I talk to people about this every day on The Ken Coleman Show, as you know, about discovering that purpose and discovering work that just fires you up. You think about it, you get fired up, you're in the middle of it, you lose track of time. You're certainly one of those people who's living the dream. But you talked about failures a minute ago and the stories that you share in this show of very successful people who've pressed through failure. I would love for you to share with the audience, what's it like from your perspective to be on the top of the mountain, even though it was a hard climb and you had your setbacks and failures and fears and all the things, is it worth it? Well, I still have setbacks That's right. and I still have failures. And as long as I continue to strive, I will experience more failures and more setbacks. I mean, that's, that's the nature of this game. You know that. And the only the only time you're not going to experience more setbacks and failures if it, is if you're done, is if you stop. Mm-hmm. And that's just not really in my nature to be that guy. So, you know, when I talk to Dave, this episode airs tonight, you know, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. You guys tune in and watch it. Fox Business Network. I'm talking to Dave. And what's cool about this conversation with Dave is I've been friends with Dave for a long time. Mm. So the radio audience, everybody listening right now, you know Dave pretty well because Dave's pretty much Dave when he's talking. But I think I know him even maybe a little bit better from being his personal friend and getting to know him on that level. So when I asked Dave about failure, and, and buddy, his eyes light up. He's excited to answer the question about failure. He's more excited to speak about the failures than he was to speak about the successes. Yeah. Because you can't have the successes unless you have gone through the trial and error phase and you continue to go through it. And, and, you know, Dave says interesting things like, if you want to become really good friends with me, then we need to get in a gigantic argument about something. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. I said, why why would a gigantic argument make somebody a better friend of you, Dave? He goes, because I respect their opinion and that they're willing to, they're willing to, you know, joust with me a little bit. And then when it's all over, we're, we're friends. We give each other a big hug, and we just disagree on that subject. And isn't that what America is supposed to be all about, that we can disagree, we can strongly disagree on many different things, but at the end of the day, what do we still have in common in this country? Is there anything we still have in common in America? I say, yes, there is. It's called life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm. Beautifully said, John. You know, Dave doesn't do uh, a lot of interviews these days, especially long form. In my eight years here, I can count on my hand. And so the fact that he was willing to sit down with you and do a long form interview, that shows me that he's got a deep respect for you. And I, I saw a promo for this and I was tuned. I'm like, I'm tuning into this because it's rare to get to see uh, two great legendary people sit down and have a real conversation. This doesn't feel like a like a breeze over media hit. This is real life stuff. And you guys dig deep into his story, what he's learned the success, the failure. Is there a thread that you found between all these people that you've been interviewing? That is a great question, and yes, there is. So it doesn't matter if it's Winona Judd or it's, uh, you know, uh, Eddie George. Uh, you know, it, it, it could be a professional wrestler. It could be a big business guy. Uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, look up this guy. I mean, this guy's just brilliant. Indian, lives here in America. Now, what they have in common is is that they recognize – the blessing that they have to live in America and have the right to pursue happiness. They know what that means. Most of these people that I interview have had the the chance to travel. They've seen other countries. They've seen how it works in other places. And they realize that if it weren't for America, guys, can you imagine what the world would look like today if America would have never shown up, if America would have never actually happened, mm. how much different the world would be today. For goodness sake, we invented the light bulb. <laughs> you know, we invented rock and roll and country music, and the list goes on and on and on yeah. because we unleashed the potential of our people. So everybody I interview has a deep respect for that. No matter what their politics are, they Beautiful. understand Love that it. they are where they are today because they have the right to pursue their dreams in this country. John, you're a good man. It's a great show. Check it out tonight. The Pursuit with John Rich and Dave Ramsey, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Fox Business Network. Check it out. Thank you, John, for being with us. More Ramsey Show coming right up.
stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The Irish family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Welcome back, America. You have joined The Ramsey Show and George Campbell and Ken Coleman. We are thrilled to be with you. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in on the conversation. Phone lines are open and we look across the lobby, George, and we see Summer standing on the debt-free stage. Summer, welcome. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. You bet. Where are you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. All right. Are you a big Astros fan? I am. Mm. I'm really excited to see them win the World Series. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to mention that uh, I'm uh, pulling for the Braves. Uh, oh, so, all right. There you all go. Right. All right. All right. We've we got to make this about you. we got to make this <laughs> about you. Uh, so tell us the story. How much debt did you pay off? I paid off $110,000. In how long? About two years. Okay. Making how much? Um, I started off at about 73000 mm-hmm. And between a raise and some side gigs, I ended up at about 83000 Nice. Very good. What do you do? I work with kids with autism doing behavior therapy. Oh, awesome. Yeah, very rewarding. Yes. Unbelievable. You have that spirit about you. Oh, thank you. A very you. calming spirit. Thanks. I yeah. feel calm right now, Ken. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned I was going to say, you should meet with George at the commercial break. He's full of anxiety. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, well, that's really fun. Okay, so what kind of debt was uh, the 110000 Yeah, so about 21000 of it was a car payment. Um, I paid that off in about seven months. Okay. And then um, about 89000 was undergrad and grad school loans. Of course. Yeah, yeah wow. So I, I've got a question yeah. here. Yeah. You've got, you're making 73 up to 83 but you must have been paying $55,000 a year to pay this thing off in two years. Yes. How did you do that? Um, so the first thing was that I moved in with my parents. Um, they have been amazing. Um, so not having rent really helped. Um, and then I also had a lot of side gigs. Um, I was a dog sitter, babysat, um, did Uber Eats, like whatever I could do legally um, to earn money. <laughs> I, so you I were did like, it. I'm going to shave every expense I can. Yes. And I'm going to increase my income. Yeah. I just kind of lived off of really basics, just Mm -hmm. learn what I needed and what I didn't need and just kind of, yeah, put everything I had towards paying off loans. Wow. And it sounds like you did nothing but work, eat and sleep. Yeah. um, I was not messing around. Um, I just really wanted to get it out of the way and I just buckled down and I did it. Okay. So give us the story. What happened? What was the impetus two years ago for you to just go this intense? Yeah. So the year before I started paying off loans, um, I did a mission trip where we went to 11 countries in 11 months. And my plan was to figure out which country I was going to live in, come back to the U.S., fundraise, and go straight to that country to live long term. And I started uh, filling out an application for a mission organization. Um, And one of the questions was, do you have student loans? So I put yes. And then the next question asked, what are you going to do about those student loans? And I thought, I don't, I have no clue. Um, So I prayed about it and just really felt like the Lord said, you need to pay those off before you can go and do any mission work. So about two days later, um, I was talking to my dad. He said, hey, my, uh, you know, your mom and I have been talking about it. Um, you can come and live with us as long as you need to get back on your feet. And I said, great, how about two years while I pay off all my debt? And they agreed. Um, and a few years ago, I did Financial Peace University through my church. So I just fished out my little workbook, just started applying the baby steps, and I just did it. Um, that's really, all, you know, all that's to it. Wow. Yeah. That's a fantastic story. Thank you. Yeah. How much of your future vision plays into that story? I feel like we got a little glimpse of it because you, you went around the world. And I think, George, I've had the privilege to, to, to travel the world. Not a ton, but enough that when you see the world 
it changes your entire perspective. Uh, is there a bigger vision on the other side of this that also helped drive this intensity? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I really wanted to be a long-term missionary. That's still the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know if or when that'll still happen. Um, but really right now, I'm so open to yeah. whatever God has for me. Um, and now knowing that I can do it debt-free, I feel like the world is my oyster. I really, I can do anything and not have an excuse. Oh, I have to pay my student loans yes. or I have to do this. And I just feel very free. This is huge, Ken. She's free. She There's can, a lot of people out there who, yeah. who want to do mission work or want to yeah. do work where they go, all right, I don't know what the financial side of this looks like for support and doing all these things. And you said, you know what? It's going to give me more options and more opportunity mm-hmm. if I can clean up this financial mess and live a debt-free lifestyle. Yep. That's yep. huge. Yeah. It's amazing. It. So uh, who were your biggest supporters? Obviously, mom and dad yes. did a lot for you. Who else maybe was a cheerleader uh, for you? Yeah, my friends were amazing. Um, I still did, you know, little vacations here and there, little dinner things. But, you know, I would be very upfront and say, okay, this is my budget. What can we do? Are you guys okay with maybe not doing a huge trip, but doing a small trip? And um, I, I just had so many supporters, so many people cheering me on. And I think a lot of people couldn't understand, but they were still really supportive. That's awesome. So what would you say, out of all the things you did, what was the key to getting out of debt? Yeah, I think um, just owning it. um, I realized that it was my debt. I took out the loans um, and nobody was going to pay them off for me. Um, I can't tell you how many people told me, oh, you shouldn't be paying off your debt. You know, the government's going to forgive it in a few years. And I didn't know if that was going to happen or not. And I didn't want to take that chance. So I just thought, okay, this is my problem. I'm going to put it in God's hands and I'm going to work as hard as I can, um, you know, to solve the problem. So you said personal ownership is the key. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. (laughs) Taking responsibility, taking back control, and not putting it in the hands of an outside force and hoping. Absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. You're a rock star. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Absolute rock star. Well, uh, you know, when when I see a young lady like this who's got so much future ahead of her, she's got options. She loves her work now. I think it's very obvious you love your work now. But yeah. then you also have a heart for maybe doing something around the globe. And as all that comes to you, you kind of kind of go, all right, I can move on this. Mm-hmm. I want you to describe, you You know, you, you said you pulled out financial peace. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want you to describe the peace you have, even though you don't know what the path ahead looks like. I mean, I, I just feel like it's everything. Um, I no longer have to worry about, um, you know, maybe one day going into marriage and having kids and kind of putting my debt on my kids. Um, like I said earlier, I feel like I can really do anything. I don't have to worry about, um, oh, no, I can't spend money to go on this trip or I can't do this. Um, I really I just feel peace. Um, I feel like I have a great future ahead of me and I'm excited to do the rest of the baby steps, too. Oh, you definitely do. Well, thank you so much thank you guys. for coming here and sharing your story with us and the audience. As an appreciation, we want to give you two books. We're going to give you Dave's uh, Legacy Journey, which is the next step for you now yeah. as you build a true legacy and I think it's going to be beautiful and I think you've got a great vision for it and then we also want to give you a copy of his total money makeover for you to give to somebody else yeah. maybe one of those friends who who supported you but hasn't quite jumped on whatever you'll know who to give yep. it to so we want to give you those <laughs> uh, as a thank you for uh, sharing your story with us so you ready to go I'm ready all right let's do this summer from Houston Texas she paid off hundred and ten thousand dollars in two years George, whoo, getting with it, making seventy-three thousand, then up to eighty-three thousand dollars. Summer, this is your moment. Take it away. Let's hear your debt-free scream. All right, three, two, one. Thank you, Jesus. I'm debt-free. There you go. She got up there another octave. I like that, man. I feel like she's got some pipes, Ken. I think oh, she yeah. can sing. Oh, yeah. I think it's very possible. I love these stories. Because, you know, I, I kept thinking as I was hearing her story, we just released this Borrowed Future documentary, yeah. and the stories are stuck with me, the heartbreaking ones, where they went, we couldn't start a family, we couldn't buy a house, we couldn't do the work we wanted to do, we couldn't live where we wanted to live because we were held back by the student loan debt. And she had $89,000 in student loans between undergrad and grad school. And she said, you know what? I'm not going to put my hope in the government. I'm going to take personal ownership, personal responsibility, and I'm going to work my tail off Mm -hmm. to create my own opportunity, to create my own options. Yeah, that's it, inspiring. It is inspiring. I tell you what else I just thought of. You know, we talk a lot about when we do these stories. We talk a lot about the peace and what she what she feels now, uh, and we talk about the struggles. But you know what else beyond the financial peace and all the options? There is a I did it. Mm. There is a 
perseverance that has been experienced. This is serious, what she did. There's no stopping her. No. This isn't just financial peace. This is grit for the journey to live and give like no one else. Wow, summer's awesome. And so are you. You can do it. We're going to help you today. Don't move. Just around the corner, more Ramsey Show. America, thrilled to have you with us here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. We're taking your questions about life, money, work, and beyond. So, so much going on, Ken. Oh, boy, do we have a lot going on. You were just on uh, Mornings with Maria. Uh, very yes. early this morning. Very early. Whew. And you guys were talking about this great resignation, yeah. and you unpacked it uh, and brilliantly in Thank the you. time that you had. And everyone's been hearing this word fly around this morning. It's this big, this uh, big ominous name people yeah. are using when they talk about <laughs> massive job turnover. That's what it is. It has a cool name. We got to name everything the great. Oh, it's it so makes true. it cooler. Yeah. And so there's this massive job turnover situation going on right now, and uh, you've been digging into this. After a couple of crazy years, people are going, "Hey, wait a minute." I don't really like my job. I don't like my situation. And they're up and leaving. They're looking for something better. Uh, and you know, Ken, it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah. This is what you're doing on the Ken Coleman Show every single day. In your new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, you lay out the proven plan, the clear path to doing work that you love. So if that's you, America, if that rung your bell, if you don't want to get out of bed and face another day at the job, you're emotionally spent, you're physically exhausted, you've lost your enthusiasm, your juice, as Ken calls it, for the work that you do, and every spark of excitement you once had, then this book is for you. If you're ready for a change, you need to read this first and get your game plan ready. And if you pre-order today, we sweeten the deal. We're going to send you over $100 worth of free resources like resume templates, job search tools, so that you can find a way to make an income and an impact, as Ken loves to talk about. Plus, if you pre-order by October 30th, that's moments away, you'll get the ebook on the 31st, which is two weeks early, so you can get a head start on your reading. So hurry up, get your copy of From Paycheck to Purpose today at Ramsey solutions.com yeah. super excited for that Ken. thank you buddy i appreciate that and just remember my kids need shoes that's so true if you're looking for just that little extra incentive i feel like they need food too <laughs> you've got some big boys isn't that the truth boy costco loves the coleman so i'll just tell you that all right let's get to the phones 888-825-5225 that's 888-825-5225 san francisco california is where we go now Kristen is there Kristen, how can we help Hi, Ken. Hi, um, George. How are you guys doing today? We are having a blast. What's going on with you? Okay, so um, my call kind of has to do with the last guy who called, um, but in a different sense. So my husband and I got married, and we moved into a house, and the roommate that was living with him before we got married came with us to the new house, which was fine because it's helped with the bills, um, so we don't have to cover everything. But now he's basically moved into his girlfriend. Um, she's stayed every night for the last four months. Um, she showers here. She washes clothes here. She eats here. Um, but we talked to him about it, said she needs to start paying rent if she's going to stay here that much because we do pay um, quite a bit more than him for the bills here. And he said she's a guest. She doesn't need to pay bills. She has to pay bills um, elsewhere. And we're not really sure what to do if we should try terminating our lease early, but I know that costs money, or if we should try removing his name off of the lease, if you even know if that's possible. Oh, boy. Sticky situation here. So what is the lease agreement? What does it say, and who, who owns that? Um, so the lease agreement is my husband, me, and the roommate. All three of our names are on it, and it's for a year so we started in june until next year next june and then um per the 
regulations, it says that there should no there should not be any subletting and nobody else besides the people who are on the lease agreement should be living here. Um, That's pretty clear to me. And yeah, there's your yeah, there's your then, there's your technical out. Have you told him that that hey, this is in the lease agreement? Um, no, we haven't told him that yet. Um, who's the enforcer? Who's the who's the actual enforcer in that contract? The enforcer would be our landlord who lives. We live about like an hour east of San Francisco, but my landlord lives in L.A. So yeah, well, I'd be on the phone with the really land- here to like check. Yeah, well, I mean, your technical out is that clause and the landlord to be your heavy, but this is still going to be a tough conversation. And at some point, we got to be big boys and big girls. And uh, he either does it your way or you get the landlord involved. Okay. Yeah. And I hope you've learned a lesson here. I hate to sound like dad. Oh, yeah. But goodness we, gracious. My husband and I are both like, wow, we are never going to do this again. Yeah. So you guys are all renting as part of this lease. So it's not like you're you're not gaining anything financially other than you have a roommate to split with, correct? Yeah. So like the all total we pay like three thousand for bills for just to live in the house and he pays about nine hundred dollars. How did you go? So we feel like we're housing a child now. Well, yeah. part of me goes, it's not like you own the house. Is there another situation? Obviously, I want him out and to get a better roommate if he's not going to agree to these terms. I don't like the idea of the girlfriend moving into the situation either. Does that cramp the space a little bit to have four people in there? Um, no, it's a big enough house for it, but we just feel like he is disrespecting the agreement that we agreed upon. And this girl isn't paying anything and she's staying here for free, which you're not allowed to stay anywhere for free. She's got, a sw- that she's got the great, <laughs> the greatest gig right now. Yeah. Rent free in, in yeah. your San Francisco. Yeah. How, were yep. you guys good friends with this clown before this, or is this just a sheer My husband situation? is. Ah. Yeah. My is husband it? is close friends, so that's where it gets sticky. No, it but doesn't. Like, it doesn't no, matter it about doesn't. relationships. Thank you very much, Chris. Can I just tell you, you need to tell your husband what I'm saying. Your husband needs to man up. My goodness gracious. If one of my friends was doing this to me, it'd be a one-on-one bro conversation. Come on, man. This is it. You, I, your husband should be ashamed of himself. You shouldn't even have to be dealing with this. He needs to man up and tell this dude, figure it out. You play by the rules or you're out, dude. But this guy is taking advantage of your husband. He is, he is taking advantage yeah. of his kindness or, shall I say, taking advantage of his lack of confrontation skills or a stomach for confrontation. Am I about right? Um, he's a police officer, so he knows how to have confrontation. I think it's the kindness part that. Well, he needs to take off the kindness hat and he needs to put on the confrontation (laughs) hat and pull out the old nightstick too. (laughs) You know, I'd be (laughs) tapping it on my thigh. Hey man, listen up here. You know, look, this, this is unfortunate. Ken Sanders, he's being good cop right now. We've got to see a little bit of that bad cop. If we want to see the situation, uh, be resolved. I don't like, if I'm in your shoes, I'm going, this guy's out. And if I've got to use the landlord to fix it, if I've got to get the husband to, to have this conversation since it's his friend, and like you said, if it's a friend, it's a different level of conversation. It's not a stranger you met on Craigslist. Is going, hey, dude, if she stays just, here, she pays rent. That's I'm the rule. A, George, you know me. I'm old school, man. You are. I'm old school. I, I mean, this might just be grabbing the guy by the back of the collar and the back of the pants well, and that, throwing him out Let's not resort to violence, line. Ken. Come on. I'm not saying actual violence. I'm oh. saying it's one of those, come on. Like, he just yeah. needs to lower the boom on this guy yeah. and go, dude, you're a child. You're acting like a child. But now, let's focus on the backside of this, the lesson here. First of all, I don't like the deal that he was paying nine hundred. Yeah, and they were paying. Now sometimes the they go, shirt. well, if you've got the master bedroom with the in-suite bathroom, you pay a little more. That's that's typical. I don't like it. So I don't know their situation there, but if I'm in their shoes, maybe it could be better to have a stranger who just keeps to themselves, who's clean, and you get a different roommate I don't who know, you don't George. have to deal with. Did you have any language in your wedding vows that said leave and cleave? You ever remember that part? I remember that part. Leave and cleave. If you can't afford an apartment without a roommate after, if you're a married couple, then you, you need to slow down. You need to do something less. I don't like the idea of any new married couple. Quite frankly, you know, I just don't like it. Yeah, and I don't and like they're in, it. They're in the San Francisco area, so it may. Now, if they went, they're paying three grand, for three people. Maybe they could find a spot for two grand that's smaller, 
and still work for them if they want to be on their own. But living in that area, high cost of living, it gets tough as you're going to pay three, four grand on your own. But hopefully the income is there to support that too. If yeah, you're living just, out there. It just, I'm just, I'm, there needs to be boundaries for a new married couple and married couples in general. And having a, I mean, it'd be one thing if it's a room over the garage, but sharing one house, I don't know, dude. Yeah. But I mean, you're younger. You're making all kinds of excuses. Well, for we've it. we've read the article. The millennials are buying houses together, oh, co-buying geez. with friends. Oh, boy. nightmare waiting to happen. Ugh. All right. Hey, I want to thank our producer, James Childs, our associate producer and call screener, Jenna Sears, and you, America. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel, and we are here for you this hour, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225, open phones. We're here to talk about your money. We're here to talk about your work. How do you combine the two? Can you make the money that you desire and have meaning in your work? The answer is absolutely yes. There's never been a better time to do it. So uh, George and I focus on those two key areas, money and work, and we want to help you perform to your peak in both of those areas. So we're here together tag teaming for you, 888-825-5225. Let's go to Evansville, Indiana. Samuel starts us off. Samuel, how can we help? Hi, Jason. Hi, George. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, but my um, name's Ken, and work... then he's George, not oh, Jason. Ken, sorry. There you sorry, go. Sorry, I apologize. No worries. Um, I work for a water delivery company making 39000 a year uh-huh. as a Class B driver. Mm-hmm. And I was recently moved up out of the warehouse because I wasn't working as a delivery driver every day. I would work in the warehouse some days and then do deliveries others. And they recently moved me up to um, go out in the field, push sales, try and build up business, but it was a temporary thing. They recently told me that they want me to go to school and get a CDL Class A license, which would be include a raise of about $11,000, bumping me up to 50000 Or if I didn't take that position, they would give me a pay cut, cutting me down to about 25000 Whoa. And I've been working with this company for three years. I absolutely love my boss. I love my coworkers. I love the work I do. I honestly believe that this, God, this job is God's blessing on me for putting me in the exact right place at the exact right time. I'm hesitant about being a Class A semi-truck driver for various reasons, including the legal issues that are in the Class A industry and just a lot of the politics that are in a Class A. I've been told that I'll get to keep my regular delivery jobs. I'm being this semi-truck driver as a substitute for their other drivers when they have sick days or vacation days or if an emergency happens and they need to have a truck rescued. So I'm trying to figure out, because taking the pay cut isn't an option, I'm trying to figure out should I take this Class A position and move up the chain that way, or should I try to find another job that's a Class B driver job and try and move up the ladder that way? 
Sounds like to me that that's the option that's best for you based on what you've told us. You've got some real concerns and you gave us a quick summary of those concerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, about being a class mm-hmm. A driver. And I think you have to stick to your guns on that. Um, but you can certainly say, all right, mm-hmm. let's look at those concerns a little deeper. And we don't have to unpack all those on the phone right now. But as you look at those concerns, you mm-hmm. go, okay, are those legitimate concerns? Or are those just right. some fears and doubts that I have because it's new and, and, and it's a bit unknown? And as you dig deeper into those concerns, it's like looking at any fear or doubt. Is this fear telling me the truth and thus protecting me? Or is this fear or doubt uh, lying to me and holding me back? I think that's all you've got to do. And I think you've probably done some of that legwork. And so if you have, um, we already know option B is not an option. You're not going to take a $25,000 pay cut. And so option C, Mm -hmm. staying in that class B lane that you're in, doing that kind of work you really enjoy. uh, In today's Mm -hmm. environment, I don't think you'd have any problem replacing this job. And you probably get a bump because I can tell you just on the macro scale, um, CNN reported last week that um, there are as many as 70 to 80,000 truck drivers that are needed right now across the country. Wow. So there's a massive need. And so even the class B, I'm sure in your area, you can replace this job pretty quickly. So I think you got to trust your gut. Have you done your homework on those concerns? And those are valid concerns. I am still doing research. I have already confirmed that a few of them are fears like the fear of getting pulled over and being falsely criminalized because one tiny little thing on my truck, it might be wrong. But it is a thing that most of them are turning out to be more fears rather than like, yeah. is this something that could be a completely detrimental to me and my career and my life? Yeah. Well, I think you, you're start of the process. I think you truly look at this and you have to decide which is the best path for me. You're going to move up if you take the class A job. You're going to move up if you mm-hmm. take another class B job and do a really good job. So I don't, I don't think that uh, there's necessarily a wrong decision that's sticking out other than option B. We're not doing that. We're not taking a pay cut. So I think you sit with it, you pray through it, and you take what is best for you. And George, I hear this a lot, you know, on the Ken Coleman show. We hear it here on the Ramsey show when we get these calls. You got to weigh options based on what allows me to move further down the road And if it's faster, great, but it doesn't always have to be faster. What's the right decision for the long term? Always the long view here. And uh, obviously, in this case, the one taking a pay uh, hit is not a good move. And he's got to weigh, okay, which is the option that I enjoy the most? You know, because we don't want to just take the fastest route if it's got all kinds of detrimental effects and harmful circumstances that come with that, it's not worth it. And a lot of that comes from George, you and I have experienced this in our own journeys where we think, well, this is the only one, this is the only way I can move up. And that's just not the case. No. And, uh, it seems like a cruel punishment to say, Hey, if you stay doing what you're doing that you enjoy, you're going to lose $14,000 a year. That's strange to me. I thought, I don't like the ultimatum that he's put in here. I know he enjoys the work, the people that he works with, but I would be searching and I would be going, Hey, who's got the biggest sign on bonus to, that I could leapfrog right now and go, Oh, there's other class B driver jobs out there that pay 10, $20,000 more. And And I I can do what I love. And and George, great point. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, if you are a driver, I don't class A, class B, class Z. I don't care. Huge need right now. Yeah. Massive need. Uh, deliveries are it's suffering. I mean, the we've whole got a trucking so, industry is well, so supply stressed. chain. I mean, if you look at supply chain, we're seeing this in the news every day. You're going to keep seeing it. I'm seeing crazy articles now and headlines that are saying Christmas uh, is going to be tough this year. You might not be able to get the Christmas present. I mean, we saw that last year. I mean. Yeah, we're, we're doing an episode on the fine print we're putting the finishing touches on right now around this whole topic of holiday spending, the supply oh, yeah. chain, what it's going to mean for you as a consumer. Yeah. But on the job side, there's such a massive need. If you're a person of character with any level of work ethic and you just show up and you're a warm body, they go, oh my gosh, you're yeah. amazing. You're looking at, at pay increases. I mean, now is the time to move. So uh, I got to tell you, I, I'm just going to push this out there. If you are, you got a family life that can support it and you like being on the open road, I'd be looking into driving a truck right now. They are paying crazy money because there is a massive need. So really interesting stuff. Uh, Thank you so much, Samuel, for the call. You got this. All right. Don't move. More of your calls coming up next. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Welcome back, America. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. Thrilled to have you with us. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell as we take your questions. You need to find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Grace in Wisconsin. I'm 18 years old and currently enrolled at my first year of community college. I have money saved for my bachelor's degree in finance, so I will have no student loans. I work 23 hours a week, making $15 an hour at a bank. I see job postings all the time that I'm qualified for that have starting salaries of $45,000 or more. Taking into consideration how desperate employers are in today's job market, I have the potential to make a lot of money if I wasn't in college. Should I continue to get my degree in finance or go straight into the workforce where I have a potential to make a lot more? Oh, I love this question, George. You ready? I'm ready. Yes, And yes, continue to get the degree in finance, but I'm going to back off to part-time online. I'm going to slow down the rate at which I'm getting the degree in finance because I've already invested in it. And in this case, the finance degree is going to give her some very viable options. And then I would take the full-time job at these banks, making the 45K or maybe more. So this is a both and. Yeah. And, and so I'm not telling you to stop college. I would slow it down, finish online because you can do that, and go start banking the money, George, because now she's going to get um, uh, experience and money and connections. Those are invaluable. And the degree, she can just putz along with that and get finish it off. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, if I'm an employer and I'm going, all right, do I want to hire someone with no experience who has the finance degree or hire someone with four years of experience who doesn't have the finance degree? That's you got to weigh those I options. I think you make a good case. And I think at that point when she says, hey, I'm actually finishing my, my program, but I wanted to get in the workforce and really start doing this stuff and gain that experience. If I'm the employer, I'm very impressed already. Yeah. And she's got no debt. Yeah. Which gives her so many more uh, options. Oh, I love this. She's option. not desperate. I listen. This is the this, the world has changed. You can finish out a degree online, so I wouldn't even stress. You know, she go well. I get the full time job. How many hours should I take? The least amount possible. Because you can just keep whittling that thing down, and you're making real money and making great progress. And I love that She's at a community question. college in her first year, so it's probably knocking out the prerequisites right now. Yeah, that's what I think. debt free, so yeah, maybe there are yeah. better options out there to yeah. get that finance. And you degree. know what? I should, I should. Thank you for pointing that out, because I, I should point out. I would, well, I take the bank job. I'd get in there, and I'd start talking to people that are up the ladder where she wants to be, and say, hey, how important is the finance degree? They're probably going to say you need it. So I so I don't think my advice changes, but I would just add that little caveat in there. Depending on which way she wants to go in finance, it may or may not be required. So really good stuff. Thank good you for question. the question, Grace. All right. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Let's go to Toledo, Ohio, home of the Toledo Mud Hens, George. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a yeah, minor league How baseball How many team. unnecessary facts do you have in your brain? I have a lot of them, and I might just start to throw them out there just to irritate James, the producer. Make sure he's paying attention over there behind the board. All right, let's go to Adam. Adam, how can we help? Hey, guys, I appreciate you taking my call and what you're doing to help out. Uh, I work in full-time ministry. My wife is a stay-at-home mom who works a few hours on the sides part-time. We have a household income of about 32000 a year. And working through the baby steps for a while now, we've got our debts all paid off, none of that. we got our emergency funds. 
funded. Uh, we're contributing fully to our IRAs, and we got a little bit going to our our son's college fund. And as I understand, then the next big thing for us is a home. And it's been it's been slow in that regard. We're pretty much throwing everything and savings we have toward our our house fund, and kind of wrestling with this kind of gazelle intensity toward that that's going to take several years given the income we've got now and it seems a little restricting for us um, kind of hinders some extra giving we could do with that some enjoyment too but my question is how how do you think we should go about funding our our house do we keep saving throwing it at a savings account put it in the mutual funds uh, we've also mentioned the idea of just putting off owning a home to, to retirement because right now our we live in a parsonage the church provides the housing and that could change but if we could just kind of concede that and say we'll wait to retirement put our extra savings toward retirement and just rent in the meantime should our situation change i just wondered what you guys think about how we should go about funding our house yeah, we, we took a very similar question on the show yesterday with Dr. John Deloney and I when they were living in the parsonage rent free. They also had a is there a housing okay, allowance that you could also get? Uh, yeah, for some housing expenses, I can I can claim some of that. Okay, yeah, it sounds like I'm living in the parsonage. Uh, are they covering all expenses, utilities, everything? No, they just they own the home. We're just we're living here. We get pay all the bills and stuff. You pay all the bills. Yes. So where where is the upside of this? You said housing is provided. Right. Well, they own the home. We don't have to pay rent. There's no rent that's or okay. mortgage payment. No rent, but you're paying utilities right. and and right. Th- okay. That's pretty. Make... That's pretty traditional right. so for it's a person. It's like a rental situation. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. So they're covering the rent basically. So if I'm you guys, I know you have this income. Is there is there a trajectory to make more in ministry going forward? Um, not real soon. <laughs> necessarily. And uh, I know your wife is working good. a few hours. How much bandwidth do you have to bring in more income? I just it doesn't sound like there's going to be much more margin in the future to start saving for a house. Right. So unless <clears throat> until if she gets at a point where she's comfortable working more full time when kids get older or or my income situation changes um significantly, yeah, we're kinda there's not a whole lot that we're looking at. Are okay. you a, are you a senior, are you a, Adam, are you a senior pastor and is it a, 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 what size church is it? It's, it's a small church, it's a small town, small church. I am the, I am the preaching minister there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the reason I asked that Adam is cause I, I'm a son of a church planner. So my dad planted two churches, just recently retired 47 years in the ministry and he always pastored small churches. And just having watched my dad when we had to buy houses and do things like that, I mean, he took on a second job. And I just wonder how open you are to that, because I think where George is trying to help you with, it's like, where's the extra income? And for my dad, which was a pretty similar situation to yours, he went out and he worked extra jobs. Uh, he took on construction jobs on the side because, you know, he didn't have the traditional office hours of a pastor with a larger church. So are you open to that type of uh, work to be able to bring in more income? Yeah, so I do a little bit of that already. I substitute teach sometimes. Um, but, yeah, the time's a little constricting. I don't know if I could do a, a good job with my ministry here if I give a whole lot more time to working. Okay, well, well I certainly understand that too, and that's that's all very subjective. Let um, me. I want to make sure we answer your question of what a saving look like, where should you park any extra margin you have, and if it's going to be like a three to five plus year time horizon, you could park that money in mutual funds. Of course, you can connect with one of our Smart Investor pros in the Toledo area, and they can sit down with you and educate you on where uh, the best use of your money might be and make some recommendations recommendations there so that that money can grow for you at, you know, 10, 11% for the next five plus years. And maybe that time horizon looks different for you guys. Maybe it's 10 years from now. If you're going to be in ministry and have this rent covered, there's nothing wrong with going, all right, one day we will own our place, but we're going to have some patience here. Yeah. And and that's the key because he's in a, a very limiting yeah. um, 
financial situation. He's just a small church like that. That's the raises. They aren't guaranteed when they come around. They're not very big. It's just, a, it's a smaller church. That's just the reality. I certainly know the world that he's in. So yeah. his wife working, him being able to uh, work some weekend, you know, maybe some Saturdays, but he's getting ready for Sunday. So if his day off is Monday, does he use that day? I mean, he's going to have to get creative and, you know, sell some stuff. It do looks some different. Stuff that, yeah, it does look different, but it can be done. Mm-hmm. This is going to take longer. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you for your service. Uh, we appreciate the call, Adam. All right. Hard to believe, George. Got another commercial coming up. Wow. Or two or Time three. flies when you're having fun. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Kent Coleman, joined by George Camel, and we are here for you this hour, 888-825-5225. It's a toll-free call, 888-825-5225. Let's go to Hermiston, Oregon, where Casey and Jennifer are on the line. And Casey and Jennifer, it says here that you guys are here to do a debt-free screen. Yes, we are. Oh, that is so awesome. How are you guys? We're good. We're uh, excited to get this uh, out of the way. <laughs> I thought they said they were excited to get the call out of the way. I was like, well, you made it this far. Well, you know, this is the I like <laughs> That's right. That's right. But you know what Casey's really saying there? I mean, he's pumped. And he's like, he's like, I, I, this is the finish line. This is the moment we've the, all been waiting they've for. They've done the work. Now, yeah. now they cross the line emotionally. So awesome. Well, let's get to the details. Uh, uh, tell us how much you paid off. We paid off fifty thousand dollars in the last nine months. Oh, come on now! All right, and uh, <laughs> what, what was the range of income during that time? Uh, one hundred and ten thousand, and now we're up to one hundred and sixty thousand. Whoa! Well, you know, I'm the work guy, the big shovel guy, making more money, making more impact guy. I gotta know, what'd you do to jump up fifty thousand? Uh, my wife finished her grad school, which was part of some of our debt. And uh, with COVID kind of winding down a little bit here in Oregon, we were able to do some more coaching. We're both in education. And then a big help is we actually flipped a, a house with some friends. So that was nice. huge. Whoa. Very nice. And by the way, congratulations, Jennifer, on the grad school. Thank you. Yeah, that's exciting a, stuff. A couple of years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can hear the relief. Uh, okay, and uh, well, we, we know what some of the debt is. We've already heard some of that, but give us the picture. What was the 50000 in debt? Was it all student loans? No, we had student loans, a car loan, and then quite a bit of money for our next child with IVF. But it, that's all paid off now. Oh, awesome. Okay, very good, very good. I certainly understand that journey. Uh, all right, so... Um, what do you guys? So, what do you do for a living? You both teaching and education. Um, I'm I'm a teacher in education. I also coach some sports. And my wife, go ahead. Um, I'm a speech language pathologist for our school district. Oh, very nice, awesome. Casey. What sports do you coach? I coach basketball and tennis. Oh, I love it. Don't right. get Ken started on basketball. Yeah, yeah. We're, we'll keep the talk away from the 2-3 <laughs> zone versus the man-to-man. All right? We won't talk about any of that. Oh, yeah. I could talk all day about who. I'll, I'll bet you could. Uh, we'll spare the audience and Jennifer, shall we? And me. Yeah, and George. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. Yeah, George has no idea what any of that means. Um, okay, and so what happened nine months ago? For you guys well, to go, we're we getting were rid of on this. our computers. Both uh, I was teaching from a computer, and my wife was trying to do speech language pathology from a computer um, about nine months ago. You know, with the whole COVID thing, and we weren't able to coach, we weren't able to do much, and so we were home a lot. And we decided we looked at our finances, and we're both into finances, but it was time we just didn't want any more bills. We want all our money going to giving and investing. And we are come from some financial advisors. My mom's a financial advisor. And so is my, uh, my brother-in-law, Jen's, Jennifer's uh, brother. So we just, yeah, we had some goals we wanted to get to. And we just need to get it out of the way. 
That's incredible. So how did you get connected to the Ramsey plan specifically? Was it from the from your mom and uh, brother-in-law or what? No, I just kind of started, uh, had a little bit more time on the computer, so I started listening to more podcasts with the YouTube channel and then just have it on my phone now. And then my wife, we've always heard of Dave Ramsey. We just didn't uh, li- have the time to listen all the time, and now I listen almost every day at least for a little bit. <laughs> Stay motivated. So what exactly did you do? I mean, 50K in nine months making what you guys are making. There were some sacrifices made here. Yeah, we uh, broke down our car, our car payment to start and just decided just to put all our extra money towards our car payment and then the student loans because we knew we had the IVF stuff coming up. And so we were home home a lot and just really broke down our budget and did the, did the envelopes for all our bills instead of just using our debit card all the time, which really helped. You just went hardcore. You were getting real nerdy going, all right, what is every penny doing in our budget? Because we want this debt out of our lives. Yeah, yeah, we got a little bit nerdy. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that. Is, when is baby on the way? We have one a daughter, Aaliyah, who's two, and then we're hoping to uh, have our next one. We're going into the doctor on November 16th with our okay. next process with okay. IVF. Okay. All right. That's what I was wondering. Well, that's awesome. That is fantastic. So who are your biggest cheerleaders along the way? Oh, um, so my family is um, – I have an uncle and aunt who both are coordinating Financial Peace University um, in Sacramento, California. And my brother, uh, as a financial advisor, um, did Financial Peace University a couple years ago. Um, so they were definitely our, our biggest cheerleaders, and we would call my brother like every other – weekend and be like hey what do you think about this we're always just running ideas by him <laughs> that's awesome i love that. i want to give the aunt and uncle a shout out yeah what are fantastic. their names um ernest and gail brown there it is ernest and gail brown solid coordinator names i, I gotta love, say yeah you think so <laughs> yeah. yeah i love that thank you for coordinating you guys are on the front lines you didn't just help out casey and jennifer you're helping out so many people that is awesome so we always ask folks that are doing their debt-free scream, George, and we want to ask you, Casey and Jennifer, what would you say to people that are listening today is the key to getting out of debt? I would say the key is just talking about it with, with your spouse, have to be on the same page and encourage each other. You know, when I talk about biggest support, not only our family, but just my wife, we, we you know, you got to work well together. And once you start seeing that those debt numbers go down, it just feels good. You just feel a nice relief where you can use your money towards more important things. Mm-hmm. Communication, monthly communication about finances, if not more. Mm, that's incredible. Yeah, that level of teamwork, it's been a thread in a lot of the debt-free screams I had with any couple. They always go, we got on the same page. We started communicating, maybe for the first time in their marriage. Yeah. And it changes everything. Way to go, guys. We're so proud yeah. of you. Wow. Yeah. So what would Thank you, you. Yeah, what would you guys say to couples that are listening in and they're going, ah, I don't know, can we really pull this off? How would you encourage them? I would just say it doesn't really matter, you know, your your profession. You just have to sit down and uh, really look at every single dollar w- where it's going, especially if you have some debt and how you can use extra money to go towards that debt because eventually that debt's going to go away if you stay focused and not finished. Yeah, I love that. Well, uh, that is really great stuff, and we appreciate you guys so much for coming on and sharing your story. We want to gift you. We're going to send you two books. The first book will be The Legacy Journey from Dave Ramsey because that's the next step for you all as you build a legacy. Uh, You guys are on Mm -hmm. your way. Yeah, and uh, we also want to give you a copy of The Total Money Makeover, and we want you to give that away. We want you to decide who needs that book, and we trust you. We know it's going to do good things, so that is a gift for you to give away uh, as our appreciation for you all sharing your story so you guys ready to go we are now are you in separate rooms i'm guessing no i joined the lunch work time we zoomed over real quick (laughs) oh super excited okay here we go they're ready to go george it's casey and jennifer in hermiston oregon they paid off fifty thousand dollars in nine months making First, 110000 all the way up to $160,000. Casey, Jennifer, this is your moment. Let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, two, <laughs> one. We're debt-free! Yeah! Jennifer, going 
She's going after it, they man. They went ham. Yeah, coach started laughing. Did you hear him? He started he started giggling, man. And Jennifer just took it, baby. That was that was awesome. That was uh, that's the half court shot. Yeah, especially she on the phone. It. The oh, goal yeah. on the phone is to to do it so loudly you distort the phone quality and it gets well, garbled. Well, you're a musician. I think she did this number. Did she throw the head back and kind of take it up? I felt that. I think you're right, Ken. You know, Good observation. Yeah, you know, you see these musicians at concerts, they hit the big note, and they kind of pull away from the mic, and you and James know more about that than I do. But I feel like she really took it to the roof. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, Great wait, story. Yeah, I, you know, i got to give Coach a hard time. Jennifer outplayed him on that one. <laughs> I, you know, I love Casey. I love Coach. but uh, You love a good sports reference, too. Well, I do. And during the break, George, I'm going to teach you the difference between a 2-3 zone and man-to-man defense. My brain just melted a little bit. I know. It's gonna it might take good. a while. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great conversation starter for you in the future. You'll thank me for it. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. This is The Ramsey Show. the Ramsey Show. It's where people congregate to have a conversation about serious stuff like life, money, your work, your relationships. We're here to help you. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel, and we are here for you. The phone number to jump in on the conversation is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. So how many of you out there are among what is being reported as millions of Americans looking to change jobs in the next year. 4.3 million people left their jobs in August, George. It was a record. Economists are calling it the great resignation. And that's why we're hosting From Paycheck to Purpose live on Thursday, November 11th at 645 p.m. Central Time. It's based on my new book under the same title, From Paycheck to Purpose. It's going to give you the plan you need to get unstuck, find your dream job, and leave a legacy. Here's the truth. You don't have to choose between making an income and making an impact. You can make money and experience meaning. It's time to go from just collecting a paycheck to doing the work you were created to do. Join us via live stream, or we have limited spots. It's going to be fun experience live here at our Ramsey Solutions headquarters as I walk you through the clear path to finding the work that you love. Event pass to start at just $10. That's crazy, George. We should be charging triple that. that. Feels like i got to talk number. to the team about that. $10? Uh, I don't know. Event pass to start at $10. Learn more by texting the word PURPOSE to 33789. Text the word PURPOSE to 33789. This is going to be a fun event. It's going to equip you. It's going to encourage you, and it will entertain you. I can't believe we're selling it for $10, True George. Statement. I keep looking at that. It's not a typo. And uh, this is a great yeah. event. I was uh, at the Get Clear live stream event that you did a little while back, and it was powerful. Yeah, it was Especially if you can be in the crowd. Yeah. There's some special moments. And there. we're doing something unique. I, I told the team. We, we, we got together. We started brainstorming. We said, let's do a really intimate setting to create an even better video visual setting for the crowd that's going to watch it via live stream. So um, we'd love for you to join us either on the live stream or in person. Purpose is the word. Text that to 33789. Let's go to Orlando, Florida. Ellen joins us there. Ellen, how can we help? Hello. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Okay. Um, So I have a car question. I'll just give some background. Um, At the end of the divorce, and I'm on a every dollar budget. I don't have any debt. I'm building up my emergency fund. Okay. Um, in addition to that, I have a fifteen thousand dollars in an investment account, and I'm expecting a fifteen thousand dollars settlement. Okay. 
Um, now, I have a car that I got about a year ago. I bought it for $3,500, and it's been having some problems lately. I was told that I would have to put in about $2,000 to be able to keep it running properly, and I can sell it now for 3000 So I'm looking to sell that car and then buy something else, and the question is how much to spend on that. Do I stay within that type of a limit, or do I go for something yeah, more good reliable? Question. What's your household income? 40000 and then um, child support of 1400 a month. Okay. And you're working on building this emergency fund. How far away are you from completing that? So right now I have 3700 in it. My goal is 22800 to be exact. And um, that $15,000 settlement is going straight into there. Perfect. So um, the settlement will, come in with will get you through yeah. baby step three. And you said you have 15000 in investments. What kind of investments are those? Um, so... It, that's an investment like that my grandparents set up for me. Um, it's like it has a 11.4% return on investment from what I saw. Okay. Um, I've never touched it. I've never taken anything out of there before. And these um, are just so like, they, are they stocks, mutual funds? It's non-retirement, right? Non-retirement, right. Okay. If I'm you, I'm using that settlement to fully fund the emergency fund, and I'm going to take a portion of those investments and use that to upgrade your car. And you could cash flow it. It just might be a little longer, which means you might have to use this car for another six months if you want to save up and pay cash for it and not touch the investment. But since it right. is, you could liquidate those investments with no penalties other than your, your capital gain. So I would talk to a tax pro. You can find those at RamseySolutions.com to figure out what the tax implications are of taking out a chunk of those investments. You're just going to pay taxes on the gains, but it may be short, long-term, depending on your situation. So if I'm you, you're asking how much car should I buy? I don't think you need to get crazy. Um, with your income and with your financial situation, I want you to be able to move through the baby steps, start investing 15%, uh, and if you've got kids, start saving for college and pay off your house after that. So to do that, I want you to have margin. And right now, getting a, getting a car, even with cash, I don't want you spending 20 grand on a car. Um, but you could spend five, you could spend six, and get you something uh, that's going to get you from A to B. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So if you sell yours for three, that means you only need to pull three from the investment account to ha get a six grand car, right? Right. I mean, the car people that I've been speaking to have been advising me that I'm not really going to get much better and I'm still going to have all the problems that I have yeah. um, because of the used car market now. Yeah. I'd, um, I'd get this thing uh, out of your life and get something a little bit more reliable. And if you can get three grand for it, even with its issues, I'd say get rid of that thing and you've got – money. I just don't want you dipping into your emergency fund because let's be honest, it's not an emergency. You know this is coming. You know the car's on its way out. So I don't want you to have a moment where you go, well, I got this emergency fund and the car broke down, so I'm going to spend 20 grand on a car. Let's get something right. reasonable for now. And here's the thing. You can upgrade that car later on. Maybe you make a little more money. You feel like you're in a good spot financially. You put some a sinking fund going in your every dollar budget and you go, I'm going to put away $500 this year or to this month. And I'm going to add that up. And once I hit eight grand, I'm going to upgrade the car again. And you can keep doing that. Yeah. Did you say that uh, that putting the two thousand in the car, the current car, would actually make it run well, or your mechanics are saying, eh, it's just a band aid? Um, they say it will take away the problems for now, but I haven't found it to be a very reliable car. What kind of car is it? It's a Nissan Pathfinder, two thousand seven. Okay. Yeah, I think I think okay, I think in this situation, but do you think you can get three with all the problems it's having? Yeah, I have someone that's willing to take it for three. Oh, all right. Well I'd take the three <laughs> and uh and then I would go get something in the five range. Five you can get some stuff that's pretty dependable, but my, do your homework on it. My this. car was six grand. O nine Honda Civic runs like a champ. Yeah, yeah, listen, the Hondas, the Toyotas, Big do your fan. homework. I mean these cars are very, yeah, very do you, do you have a car in mind that you're looking to buy? Um, not specifically. Okay. That's just my, my hot take is I, if, I, if you're looking for reliability, Honda and oh, Toyota yeah. well, are going to be the way to go. But yeah, you can do your range. homework. Uh, you can do your homework. And, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm looking all the time cause I got a 15 soon to be 16 year old. And, uh, I could tell you, Ellen, they're, they're, they're decent cars that can be very dependable in that five grand range for sure. Yeah. And here's the deal. The Dave Ramsey method. 
where you just show up with five grand in cash and you look it over, you mull it around, ask lots of questions. Very emotionally detached. <laughs> Not desperate at all. Not at all. Very barely emo- excited. Barely. Like, why am I even here? All right? Because they want to move the car. Anybody selling a car for five wants to move the car. All right? So then you go, all right, uh, well, I'm thinking, uh, well, and you just pull it out of your pocket. And you just count out 4000 You go, would you take four? And then let them react. If they say no, absolutely not. 5000 hard price, I'm not moving. Great, then you got options. If you want it, you can buy it. But I like going at four, George, because I like them in my mind coming back at forty six, and you go, "Would you take forty two? A little negotiation. You say where this goes. See yeah. where this goes. Be smart about it. And cash, here's the thing: Ken, people man. say, "Cash." Ken, you can't get a car for that in this market. Oh yeah. You have can. you looked? Have you checked Facebook Marketplace? Have I'm you telling Craigslist? you, you can. Yeah, you can. I'm wearing out Facebook Marketplace. I had no idea this existed. I didn't until know about you were on year Facebook, Ken. I'm very impressed. Well, I should point out that I'm only the the Ramsey Solutions uh, social media team. Okay. But I have a dummy account. That's the way to do it. Right and there. I go in there. Nobody knows I'm there. And I'm just on the Facebook Marketplace. That's so good. Yeah. Just sold a car, by the way, on Facebook Marketplace. Way to go. It can be done. Ken Coleman did it. Yeah. Oh, boy. Let me tell you something. I am the low if, bar. If Ken can do it, anyone can. All right. Hey, I want to thank Kelly Daniel and James Childs. I want to thank you, George Camel. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America's hanging out to have a conversation, purposeful conversation about life, about money, about your work, about your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. George, how are you feeling today? Feeling wonderful, Ken. Feeling good? Yeah, I like the sweater today. You like that? It makes me think of fall and pumpkin spice lattes. Really? Yeah. Really? The light blue does that for you? Yeah. Me. Yeah. You now see the green. That, to me, feels a little bit pumpkin spice latte, which, by the way, I want to point out, I'm not a fan. Really? I haven't jumped into the craze. I know this about you. We've traveled together. You're a peppermint mocha guy. James, Kelly is pointing at James. James, you like the pumpkin spice? I like it if you you know, put a few less pumps of syrup in there so it's not so sweet. The flavor, I'm a fan of, yes. Okay, so light pumpkin spice. Okay, Kelly and I are on the no way train. Good for you. This, see, Kelly and I, we see This eye is eye. the content America's here for. Well, I think, I think people are listening. They're going, you're either in one camp or the other. I don't think there's middle ground. Plus, anytime spice. we can get James to give us any personal information, it's a win in my book. Is that right? Yeah, he's Fort Knox, man. Is he really? I don't even know if his real name is James. <laughs> no proof. I, you know what? I'm going to tell you something, folks. James Childs, longtime producer of The Ramsey Show. I find him to be delightful. I really do. He's quiet. I never said he wasn't delightful. But I don't think that he would, if I asked James, like, you know, tell me your favorite band, I think he opens up like, you know, like crazy. I sure. think he just, he turns into a, you know, like one of us, just gabbing, gabbing, gabbing. The guy likes his music, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So He's happy to talk about yeah. that. And we're happy to talk about money. You. Career. So let's get to it. Andrea joins us in Topeka, Kansas. Andrea, you're on The Ramsey Show. How can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call. So I have a financial question, of course, but um, I'm on baby step number three. Uh-huh. Um, I have a kitchen repair that needs to be done with a bit sooner than later because I have um, the new dishwasher sitting there. But the cost is to fix it's going to be about $3,123. And I'm just a little nervous about spending that money, even though it needs to be done eventually. 
because <laughs> it's just a lot of money out the door yeah. when I have other expenses. How far that. away are you from fully funding the emergency fund? Um, so I think I need about um, 9300 for about three months, but for six months I was thinking about um, about almost 19000 Um I am a single mom, so there's only one income. So I'm just trying to plan accordingly. <laughs> What's your take-home pay every month? Uh, take-home pay, uh, $4,395, and then I have about approximately $300 of child support. Okay. That's great. So how um, far are you into this emergency fund? Uh, about 9000 Oh, so you have three months um, currently. For nine- I, I almost, yeah, just just like uh, just now. Like That's great. Right. Good for just you. Now. Hey, uh, just a, a quick question. You said that the new dishwasher is in the kitchen. It just needs to be installed. Well, I have the old dishwasher is about on its last leg. I purchased a new dishwasher um, over Labor Day um, when they were on sale. <laughs> yeah. So that was sitting because I thought it was going to die sooner and yeah. it's still chucking chugging a lot. Good. Um so it's sitting there packaged in my in my between my dining room and living room. Right. So area. Well, my point is the three thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars, that's the cost to install it? No, it's to um replace all the countertops. So like my house is an older house okay. and so the floors were uneven. So when I moved in we fixed the floors and then now I have to either rip up the floors, which I don't want to do because they're new, right. and, or rip up the countertop, which I don't like anyways. So um, I see. Just, I got you. I got you. I'm tracking with what the cost is. Okay. I got you. Okay. So how long would it take for you to get to that six-month emergency fund? How many more months? Uh, probably like another six to seven. I also pay for private school, um, and, and so like that takes up a chunk of my budget. So not a lot of margin to to continue on with the baby steps right now. Yeah, I I have about mm, thirteen hundred twelve between. Well, I've had a lot of home repairs, so that's kind of slowed down the process. But um, comfortable like about a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars every month of extra margin. Yeah, good for you. That's great. Well, you're crushing it. As a single mom, you're doing some incredible work. If I'm you, I mean, I'm finishing out this emergency fund to get you in a good, solid financial foundation, and I'm dealing with the old countertops. I'm dealing with the old dishwasher. And uh, if the dishwasher goes out, I mean— Hand wash them. You can hand wash them for a month. Could you do that? I guess I hate, I hate washing dishes so I know. Much. I'm with you. I get it. I get it. But it's just you and, and, and how many kiddos? Uh, just one. Oh, my gosh. We're doing paper plates for a month. Can I just tell you? That's exactly where I was going. First of all, I mean, you're a single mom. You're a superhero. Okay, Andrea? You're amazing. So you can wash the dishes. But if it's that big of a deal, I'm with George. I'm going paper plates and paper cups. It's just you and the kiddo. And I'd also get some extra quotes on the repairs. Yeah, I think that can be that, beat. It feels high to me, yeah. but depending on what you got going on, I would at least get a few quotes from some contractors in the area and go, hey, does this, you know, yeah. what would you charge for this? Yeah. To see if you can speed up that process. Because if it's two grand, well, that's great. That might speed up the process by a month or two as well. Yeah. Okay. You got us? You Andrew, one other, one other question on this, because I'm trying to help you save even more money and do all this faster. I want one more idea. Okay. Are you involved in, in the community? You have a good uh, group of friends around you. Maybe you go to church or you plugged in somewhere to a friend group or church in any way? Um, not quite yet. I moved here a year ago. Um, my parents are relatively really involved and they're going to do some of the work with a friend. But okay. um, they, yeah, I, I'm pretty relatively new. I have family and stuff, but I'm not, I don't have a community. Okay, base here's yet, the deal. Here, even at my church. Andrea, yeah. I really love the fact that your parents are there and they're involved and they're going to help. I'm telling you right now, you can beat that $3,100 and $25. I mean, $3,100. Let's call it that. I can't talk to you yet, George. But you can beat that, Andrea. I'm telling you, you can beat that with help and people pulling in there, the demo on that. There's friends that could come in that have some construction background or whatever. Your dad's got to know somebody that can come in and do that demo. And we could probably do that for half of that cost. Okay. Yeah, and then maybe I need to change. Maybe it's the because it's the counter and the sink. Um, I get it. It's going to cost about that. I but, get it, but I'm telling you, I have. And my pops. parents told me to do it. <laughs> well, appreciate that. But if parents can make some connections for you, and you and you just kind of see who'd be willing to help you to come in and help a single mom out, are you kidding me? 
Yeah. You know, parents I mean? told you to do it, but they're not paying your bills. So it changes the, the situation. Yeah, appreciate there a the bit. advice, mom and dad, but I'm over here doing my thing. You should really change out the countertops. Yeah. It'll be three grand. Well, you should do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some help. Let's see if we can we can cut costs here. People want to help single moms. They ought to. If I knew somebody in Topeka, Kansas, I'd be on the phone on the commercial break. Yeah. Go on, let's help her out. Yeah. But I get her predicament, Ken. You know, we're, I'm a millennial. Me and my wife, we don't live on Little House on the Prairie. I didn't sign up for dishwashing by hand. But. You can do it for a season uh, to get a good financial foundation. <sighs> oh, these Gen Xers. Well, you walked uphill both ways, let me guess. I did, but I also still wash my own pots and pans. We don't put them in the dishwasher. Oh, sure. Well, then you can wash the rest of them. All right. But we even came up with the paper plate idea, which I thought was brilliant. brilliant. We were both there. <laughs> That's a classic dude move. You can buy eight paper months plates. worth of cups at Costco for $12. Go today. All right, we we got to take a quick break, but we're coming back. This is The Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel, and we're taking your calls to help you move forward in your life. You want to move forward in your work, do something you love, make a bigger paycheck, which will help you get through the baby steps faster. I'm your guy. That's what we do on The Ken Coleman Show on The Ramsey Network. And then, of course, George is going to help you with your money questions as well. So we're here together. 888 825 5225 888-825-5225. The last 18 months have been, well... I don't even know what you call them. Just a lot. Wow. You wanted to say unprecedented, but you held back. Is that right? Is that what you think? Yeah, we've put a kibosh on that word around here. (laughs) No more. (laughs) If if we removed it from the lexicon. Pivot, unprecedented, it's all gone. It's all gone. We're done with it. Yeah, that sounds like something Dave would say. Uh, But either way, uh, it is uh, make you wondering what in the world is next, right? Because you don't know. I mean, we felt like it was going to be slowing down, thought it was going to be getting better. Now inflation, now we're talking about, are we going to even have Christmas presents in the stores? <laughs> it's just... Always something new to worry about. It really is. the headlines. It really is. Uh, so anyway, maybe that's how you feel about your money too. You're tired, you're stuck, you're stretched thin, you don't know how... You're going to get out of it. You don't know what's next. What's the next thing you're going to have to pay for? But it doesn't have to be that way. All you need is a plan because a plan gives you confidence that when everything else seems out of control, you can control the money. And that plan is Financial Peace University. This class will teach you everything you need to know to save money, pay off debt, and build wealth for the future. You can stream the lessons on your own or get support by going through the class with others. Then you'll put that plan into practice with the premium version of our Every Dollar Budgeting App by syncing your bank To your budget, you can easily track your spending and see where your money goes. You get all of this only with a Ramsey Plus membership. You don't have to stay exhausted or overwhelmed. You can win with money. Start your free trial of Ramsey Plus by texting TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL. Text that word to 33789. Los Angeles, California, the city of angels. Taylor is there. Taylor, how can we help? Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Well, we are living the dream. Taylor, what's going on with you? All right. Well, I'm I'm out on a walk with my 18-month-old daughter, and it's sunny and 75, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> it, it, it could be worse. It could be worse. A happy yeah. Californian. I'll yeah. take it, Ken. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you well, like that? I uh, like that. I see what you're doing there, George. You don't have to take that from him, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You know, it's, it's okay. Well, it, it is what it is. Cause we're yes. Some Californian and some island, so I, I'm a little mixed blood. <laughs> all right. How can we help? All right. Oh, um, I got a question for you guys. Um, 
Basically, it is, what would you do with our money financially in the current situation that we're in? Um, So I'll give you kind of a background here as quick as I can. Um, My wife and I got married about five years ago or so, and at that time, she took a position with Chapman University. She's a professor in accounting out here um, in actually Orange, California is the exact town. And I own a business. It's a higher end bicycle shop, like pedal bikes and road bikes back in Iowa. Um, We are split in terms of where we live about seven months in California, five months in Iowa. My busy season is in Iowa, which is basically her off season because she's on an academic schedule. So we spend most of our summers in Iowa and we spend the rest of the year out here in California. Now, we've gone through pretty much all the baby steps. Um, We don't have debt. Uh, What we do have are two homes and a commercial building. Now, (laughs) uh, we we have a home here in California. It's on a 30-year mortgage at 2.6%. We have about $550,000 left on that. It is valued at about $870,000. So um, our home back in Iowa, we have a home there on a 15-year at 1.9%. Uh, we have about 98 left on that, and that is valued at just over 300000 And then we have a commercial building that we purchased last year that my business rents from. So my business is a C-Corp, and that then rents from us as landlords. Now, the reason we purchased that and have a mortgage on it and didn't pay cash is because we were very strapped with a time issue, so it was either close the business up or purchase the building and rent from it. It's kind of a weird thing. I got diagnosed with a toxic mold poisoning and that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole oh nother thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. So like, like I'm, like I said, it's a kind of a weird situation. I think, you know, nine times out of 10, we would say go this way, but we might be that one out, one out of 10 time that it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't make sense. And we weren't ready necessarily to completely uproot our life in Iowa. Um, and the reason being is, we don't know if we're going to be here in California because my wife, her job, uh, we probably have two, maybe three years left here if she doesn't get tenure. So she's a tenure track professor, but if she doesn't get tenure after that two or three year mark, then we would most likely move back to Iowa. Got and it. so our, our biggest thing is like, we, we have extra kind of cash flow coming in. Would you throw that at, homes or would you put that in to like an investment like retirement account why we have that cash flow because we don't think that that's going to stay there forever and that amount of money can grow pretty quick most of our like we have two hundred and seventy thousand in the retirement account um we've got about seventy five thousand in alternative investment accounts those are right now are anywhere from 12 to 17 percent they've been pretty consistent and then we've got you know a thirty thousand dollar um emergency fund, and then it's about 20K in savings. What's the savings for? You guys have any goals with that? Um, it's, honestly, it's just like a, I, I'm, I don't know if I, like an oh shit fund. Like if something happened at the big time where like, you know, business issue, building expense, that type of deal. Okay. Um, we just kind of have it. But my wife just kind of likes to have it. There. What, so what's the alternative cool. investment? <laughs> what's that about? Um, it's just mis- like there's some real estate in there. Um, there's uh, there's some art. There's some supply chain financing. There's some. Um, so if you wanted to today, could that you thing. liquidate that and get seventy five k in cash? Uh, within a year, yeah, within, within year. a year. Some of them still have about six six to eight months left. Yep. Well, looking at these numbers, I they, mean, I know they, you're asking, should I? They do cash flow. They do cash flow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. If so you're... they have. If you're following the baby steps, I want you to have a paid-for house before we continue building wealth, before we continue investing. Uh, So that means we're not going to continue this investing track. I know you're seeing the money grow. You're going, hey, it's getting 12 to 18%, and it's been a great bull market. But what I want you to do is get rid of that Iowa house. It's 98 left on that. I mean, you could, with your savings and those alternate investment accounts, you could basically pay that off this year. Yeah, That would free up the yep. Iowa mortgage payment to then attack the California payment if you wanted to do that. I know you guys may not be there a long time, but you're going to build that in your in your equity anyways when you go to sell it. So that's what 
I would do. That's the Ramsey plan. Before we go into, you're going to have your the rest of your life to go wild with investing. But right now, you've, you're sitting here with three mortgages, the commercial mortgage, and at some point, that could put you in a real bind financially. So I want you to have options. And right now, you guys have a great income and things are great. But at one day, things may not be great, and you're going to have these payments to make. So I would clean up the Iowa debt, get rid of that mortgage, attack the California one, and then work on that commercial one, and um, liquidate anything you can that doesn't have any tax implications retirement accounts, things like that. George, a stellar, stellar job. I have nothing to add other than it just, it kind of amused me as we began to move from Iowa to California, California back to Iowa. It's a fascinating situation. Yeah. You don't hear a lot about people splitting their time between Iowa and California. And I just got to imagine that is like, it's like going from Mars to Venus, isn't it? Very different situation. I would think so. And this is a young couple, and they're going to have a California home and our Iowa home, and they, yeah. they've done very well. Very I mean, you well. You guys clearly are crushing it. I would just simplify. I think you're right. Simplification it's a lot going right on. now. You know, baby yeah. and young baby. By the way, I thought he did a nice job of walking the streets of Very LA. Very impressive. Uh, he kept his. He wasn't winded. No. I was paying attention to that too. In shape. Yeah. Very in shape. Yeah, you awesome. did such a good job on answering that money question, George. I was lo- There's a lot going on. I was locked in on his uh, heart rate and what I thought it might be, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Glad you're being observant in some way, shape, or form. Well, you did a good job. There's nothing else I can add to that. There's a reason why you're a, where you're a money I'm a nerd. I like the numbers. What you can I like say? You like the numbers. You do good with the numbers. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, folks. Don't move. More of your phone calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague George Campbell. We are here for you, America. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. It's a toll-free number. Phone lines are open. 888-825-5225. All right, George, let's go to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and that's where Tyler joins us. Tyler, how can we help? Hey, how are y'all doing? Well, we're having a blast. Um, so I've been, yeah, well, I've been uh, scrambling on YouTube at every episode. But a lot of it does help, but it doesn't really match like my predicament. Me and my fiance are in, so I thought I'd call and just share a little bit and Great. see what y'all thought. Right? Up. Um. So we just both graduated from school. We have uh, both just got jobs recently in the past two months. Our household income right now it's on track to be about a hundred twelve thousand a year. Sorry. Try one more time. Speak Here's directly into the phone. Well, um, we're getting married in June. Okay. We have about $112,000 of household income. Okay. Um, myself is 49 of that. We have 23000 as of now in savings, both of our savings accounts. Um, 
We have no debt, no car payments. We both live at home with our parents, so we're not really paying any bills besides going out to eat and doing, like, leisure things. Did we lose you? Yeah, I think his, his Can phone's... Can you hear me? Yeah, there well, we you're, go. You're coming in and out. Are you in one place? You're moving around? What's going on? Oh, no, I'm in one place. I'm in my office. Okay. Yeah. Let's, so I heard 23K in savings. There's no debt. You're both living at home. And then it went quiet. So what's your question? Hey, so with our current position, we don't know whether, like, the way the market is, if we should, like, use that 23000 we have in savings to so maybe look at land, maybe invest in some land and start making payments on our land, and then maybe potentially building a house on it, or possibly just starting to just keep saving all the money that we're making month to month, and then debating on if we should rent or go straight into, like, a 15-year mortgage. That's a great question. Uh, what's the deal with the wedding? Are we cash flowing that? Who's paying for that? Uh, we're being we're both blessed. Our parents are paying for it, so that's something we're both thankful for. And when is the wedding? In June. So okay. we got some time. So okay. from now until then, I'm stacking up as much cash, both of you. Uh, saving up as yeah. much as you can so that when you enter this marriage, maybe you got a big pile of money. And what I don't want you to, I actually don't want you to jump into a 15 year mortgage or some land. I want you guys to rent for a little while and get the hang of marriage. Yeah. That should be your focus where you invest your time. And while you do that, you can still be saving money while you're renting. And I know it feels like for you, because you guys have done so well, you're going, wait, we're, we're not going to throw money on away on rent, but here's what it's going to do. It's going to set you guys up not only financially, but in your marriage. There's a lot, there's a whole lot of learning curve to marriage, and home ownership added on to that is a big pile of nightmare. So I want you guys to get some footing under yourself. Maybe you sign a six to 12 month lease and then start to dream together and go, yes. what do we want to do? Yeah. And uh, land, you know, while it's great to buy some dirt, is that her dream too? And does she want to be in a single family home and not wait three years for the hopes of building a house on this land? So if I'm you guys, I'm renting for a little while. With a big pile of cash that you're continually saving up, make sure you're, you've are you got that emergency fund in place, three to six months of expenses. You're both investing 15%. Uh, and then at that point, you're going to have a big down payment, and maybe you could even pay for it in cash. I mean, how old are you two? We're both 23 years old. Unbelievable. You guys are going to be set up. If you yeah. do this stuff and you follow the baby steps, you'll be able to pay cash for a place uh, before you're 30 yeah. at this rate with well, your right income. right now, with that... With that twenty three thousand we have in savings, and now I'm uh, I'm kind of debating if we should just act like we don't have ten thousand of that. So that's our emergency fund. Like we don't need just forget we have it, and if it, we need it, we have it. But just act like we have thirteen thousand, and just keep adding to that. Well, here's the thing: we you, to... you don't know what life looks like when you're married. You don't know what your expenses are yeah. yet. And so once you do get married, whatever you need for three to six months of expenses, you're going to add up. Here's a month of what our life looks like. Let's multiply that by three or six. If you both have great stable incomes, you can lean towards three, and the rest of that money can go towards your next goal. Which it sounds like yeah. you guys want to get into some real estate, buy something, and I'm all for that. Uh, and with your position at 23 years old, making you know six figures in a good financial spot with no debt, you're going to be able to get there in no time. And if you do it, you mentioned 15 years, so I love that. 15-year fixed rate mortgage where the mortgage payment is no more than a quarter of your collective take-home pay. That's going to give you guys margin to continue the baby steps, to save for the future, to pay off the house early, all of those great things. So you're, you guys are doing great. Congratulations on the wedding. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Let's go to Malachi next in Rogers, Arkansas. Malachi, how can we help? Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call, George and Ken. I really appreciate it. You bet. Um, so I, I really struggled with how to, how to phrase this question. Um, but I'm 22. We've got a beautiful wife and two adorable children. Um, I'm only making $16 an hour. I don't have a degree. Thankfully, I don't have any debt. Um, but our rent's going up. It's, it's getting to the point to where, um, we can't really do anything significant. I, I can't put away for retirement. Um, I can't put anything into a savings account, um, and basically the most we could put into savings each month is each month is about a hundred dollars. Um, you know, just leaving even just leaving a little bit of extra money for you know unexpected stuff, or you know, um, like if we need to get an extra thing of diapers or something. So I'm I'm really just not sure what to do um, as far as options go. There's not really anything else in my area that's comparable. Um, what are you for, doing now? You know, a family bus ride. Um, as far as career goes, yeah. Um, I, I worked at a t-shirt shop, um, which is, I mean, they're super nice people, um, and it's a great gig and it, 
you know, I was unemployed prior to that. And so I don't know, unemployed, but for a time I had been, um, and so, but I mean, there's really not much room for advancement. If I, if I stay there 20 years, I, I'll probably be doing the, uh, the same thing I'm doing today. Well, how, how big of an area is Rogers, Arkansas? I mean, it's the, it's, it's in the Northwest Arkansas area. So it's, it's pretty big. I think it's one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Um, but it doesn't, um, really have any of the industry that I'm wanting to go into. What industry do you want to go into? Publishing, uh, publishing, book design, formatting, and like typography and stuff. Okay. Well, so if that's the industry you want to be in, where, where are those jobs? I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay. Let me help you out. Okay. So Nashville's got a lot of publishing jobs. Okay. You need to do your homework on this, you know, because you can't sit there. You've got a family to take care of and $16 an hour is barely getting you by. And it's also 2021. And you said you're in a really good area, Northwest Arkansas. My goodness, Walmart's out there, Bentonville, all that area. And and we're in a situation where uh, companies are begging people to show up. Dude, you can make way more than $16 an hour. And you yeah. should be making way more than $16 an hour. Not at the t-shirt shop. It's time to get busy. This is an income issue. You've got the discipline. You've got the know-how. You're doing a good job. You still don't have enough income. And and so we yeah. have two issues. We have short-term and long-term. The short-term, that's what I just addressed. I'm kind of kicking you in the seat of the pants and going, get out there. And if you got to drive a delivery truck, you can make $20, $22 an hour. Okay? Get out there and get mm-hmm. busy. You're not wanting to go into T-shirts anyway. So go where if you're, wherever you can go right now and get more income. Now, then once you get stable and you can breathe a little bit, uh, then you can allow yourself to say, okay, uh, if I wanted to move to the Nashville area to get into publishing or New York or wherever, 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 you, you got to do your homework, that, that type of work you want to do. Where are the best places to do it? It's not just an area. Where are the companies at that are looking for talent? Are you qualified? If you're not, Malachi, what is it going to take for you to get qualified? How much is that going to cost based on your budget? How long is that going to take? Well, these are questions you need to answer after you start making more money and get some margin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come on, yeah, man. I appreciate you hitting me in the butt a little bit. <laughs> Listen, you got a lot to offer. <laughs> I need to hear that more. Thank yeah, you. you know what you need? You need a picture of that family. You need a picture of that future in your head all the time. Get out there, man. If you got to do two jobs right now, there's plenty of money to be made. You have an income issue. That's it. Get the income up, walk the baby steps out. Get called qualified for the future that you want and step into it. You got this. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. Our scripture of today comes from Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Today's quote from Zig Ziglar, you are the only person on earth who can use your ability. Love Zig, love the simplicity, but always a lot of depth. Behind Zig, so amazing man. Yeah, great dude. D- I never got to meet him. Mm. Dave talks about him; he was one of Dave's heroes. But uh, never got to meet Zig, unfortunately. All right, let's get back to the phone lines. Let's go to Luke in Phoenix, Arizona. Luke, how can we help? I'm good. How are you? We are having a blast. What's happening today, Luke? Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, at the beginning of the year. I am receiving, and it should be a yearly thing as long as I'm in the job I am, 
but it's a profit share check that I'm getting for somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars next year. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, like, how do I budget that with the rest of my income? What's your household income? Um, so my regular salary is seventy-two, and then my wife is in real estate and somewhere between eighty and a hundred she makes, depending on the year. So total household income is somewhere in one hundred fifty to one hundred seventy range, maybe? Yeah. Okay. And then the bonus is gonna move it the bonus will move it up to closer to two. That's fantastic. 200. Way to go, man. That's awesome. So where are you guys at? Give me a financial picture of of where you're at. Have you been following our baby steps? Um, yeah, we're working through them now. Uh, we should hopefully we're selling a rental property that we had that was out of state. Thank God, and um, that should eliminate almost all of our all of our debt. Plus, give us our emergency fund. Fantastic! So that'll put you at baby step four, where you guys are investing fifteen percent of your household income in retirement. Yeah. Okay. And do you have a primary residence? Yeah, we already own a house. And it's paid for. No, it's not. Okay. It's so on a mortgage. What's the mortgage on that? Uh, four fifty. Four fifty, and what's the house worth? Uh, six, six, six and a half. Okay. So if I'm you guys, I mean, we, I'm applying this money to your goals and treating it kind of like an irregular income thing. And so if if I'm you, if I got $40,000 today, I'm slapping that thing on the house and paying that mortgage down. I mean, you got a, it's a sizable mortgage there. And so if you keep putting Mm -hmm. that bonus towards that on top of any extra margin you have past baby step four, do you guys have kids? Yeah, we have two. Okay. So once you start investing that 15% into maybe your 401k, Roth IRAs, things like that, then you're going to start socking away some money for the kids' college fund. I'm guessing they're a little younger? Yeah, five and one. Perfect. So we've got a lot of time. Put that money into some ESAs, 529s, things like that to let that money grow tax-free so that when they go to college, if and when they do, you'll have money to pay for that. And then on top of that, you're at baby step six, which is where we're paying off the house early. So once you've got these plates spinning, you've got your investments for retirement, you've got the investments for kids' college, any extra margin and any extra bonus, I want going towards that house. And if you do that, I mean, it okay. sounds like in a few years, you guys could have a paid-for house that's worth 650 or more. Okay. Should I set any of the money aside for tax purposes wise? I'm kind of worried because it's going to be W-2 income, but I don't know like how that, how that. They don't, they don't take taxes out of that bonus. Well, yeah, no, it will be taxed, but like, uh, just, it doesn't get taxed at the right rate because they just, when you, the W-2 is just accounting for my income. It doesn't, because my wife is, is, uh, um, is, is all 1099, so none yeah. of hers isn't. So basically, there's there's extra taxes that are, are needed. Basically. Sure. If you guys calculate those taxes, set those aside in a separate fund so that when it comes to tax time, you're ready to pay for that. And of course, I'd be working with a tax pro with your situation. You can connect with one over at RamseySolutions.com. They're, they're Ramsey trusted. They're going to help you do things the Ramsey way. They've been vetted by our team, and they can help you navigate what those tax implications might be for your scenario. But you guys are crushing it, man. Way to go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is this is good. I like this. Forty thousand dollar bonus. How do I how do I manage it? We like those calls. So incredible. Yeah. Really that puts fantastic. you in a great financial spot. Yeah, I love that. All right, let's go to Chad in Indianapolis, Indiana next. Chad, how can we help? Hey George, hey Ken, honored to be on the show here. Um have a quick question for you with regards to a potential bid business purchase. Mm-hmm. Um, so my wife and I are in baby steps four, five, and six. Uh, we're putting back 15% for retirement, um, following the baby steps. And uh, uh, my employer owns an insurance agency and has given me the opportunity to uh, become a potential owner in the future here. There are two other partners involved, really good friends of mine and coworkers. Um, obviously, there's a lot that goes into any kind of a partnership. I know Dave's not a big fan of that. Um, but my question is, so... The the option is to go forward with a structured buyout that would be um, – so uh, essentially we would be gradually buying out the agency until we reach 10% ownership, at which time we would uh, become the full owners. Um, right now, my opportunity is 33% partner, but the other two partners are open to giving me majority. Um, at, at which time I would have the, yeah. 
Okay, the so opportunity to be a majority owner. Right. Yeah. A couple of quick questions. We only got about three minutes or so, so we got to get to the facts here. So how much sure. is how much is that payment? Uh, is it monthly, so, quarterly, for you to get to the thirty three percent? So the payment for me would be about fifteen hundred dollars a month, uh, based on the valuation we're at right now, um, and that would be fifteen hundred dollars a month from each partner in order to reach that ten percent. It right. would take How about long? five years to get there. All about, right. That was my yeah. next question. So it take you five years to get to where you would own 33%. Now explain to me quickly, how do you then move from 33% to the other partners are going to give you the majority? What does that look like? Well, so I, the, the other partners would always be part of the buyout, uh, but I would have 34%. So my payment would just be a little bit higher than theirs. Um and that's when the actual buyout occurs. I'd have 34% and they would both have 33. So what does that give you over having 33 as far as? Uh, it just gives me uh, more control over the business. I know that's. So you have kind of the majority voting with... voting share. You can get to make exactly. some more. Okay. That's yeah. what I wanted to know. Is it, do you have a little more power and control in that spot? So I'm doing the math yeah. here. 1500 bucks a month for five years. You're looking at 90 grand to buy into this thing. Yeah, it's actually a hundred grand, so it's just a little bit more than that. So okay. I may have given you some. So yeah. hundred grand to buy in, and what's the upside of this? Well, so the upside is the the business pulls in about two hundred and fifty net profit at the end of the year. Um, once I formally purchase the business, then uh, then we'd be looking at all that upside coming in, which I can then use to pay off the remaining. Uh, amount on the business to the prior owners. So 250 net profit, is that split between the three? It would be split between the three, yes. And that's on top of We all of have income. a very ag aggressive mindset. Yeah, and then that. you're planning to pay them off? This is going to take way too long. It's not, there's no value It doesn't sound like it's going to be easy. Yeah. And it sounds like it could get messy along the way. Chad, we let you probably go a lot longer than Dave would. This is not a good idea. This is this is this is not. Uh, this has got all kinds of problems with it. It's not spelled out very clearly. You got three people in the pot. Uh, this is not a very big business either. Two hundred fifty thousand net. Um, these numbers just don't add up to where this would be even worth taking on all the headaches and the risk that we uh, are very clearly against with partnerships. Yeah, I, I, if you want to do this, I'd go out on your own. A hundred percent. If you can do it now, you could do it on your own and have a lot more control and not have to wait and hope and deal with messy friendships. I mean, that's the thing. You might hurt some of these friendships along the way is we all fight for power and control over the next few years. Yeah, I mean, the very word control, I mean, it, it, it has to happen in these conversations and that creates a weird deal. I think you do it on your own. Either you buy it on your own. Uh, if you believe in it that much, or you start something on your own, but this is a bad move. This isn't good financially either. Uh, well, good stuff. Hey, fun times, George. Always. Campbell. Thanks. Pleasure. For, yeah. I want to thank our senior associate producer, Kelly Daniel, and our erstwhile legendary producer, James Childs, and you, America. Thank you for listening. This is your show. This is The Ramsey Show. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.